Okay, now I think this is probably the third video in the little short video in the sequence of the tower pocket. And we had just finished stitching in this under part. We stitched that all down. And there's where it looks. And I gave it some steam, pressed my stitching in, and then I chain. Now we are ready to construct this part that goes over the top of that. So we've already prepped that edge. I'm just going to give it one more little confirmation that that's the edge that I want to use. For the end. And now we place a little clip where the fold line is down there. That is our fold line. We're going to fold right on that, which, looky there, it actually meets up that this little quarter-inch fold line covers that stitch on this side. So that's where we want that, so I'm just going to start to press in my fold. It's going up along my stitch line, which is hard for you to see in the white. It's right there. And we're going to continue up on that. Folding evenly, so that this distance is even of our tower that we're creating. Get up in here. Now I want to make sure that all of this stuff is upward, that it isn't stuck down in here, and peeking out, or peeking out in here or there, that we want it all up like this. Because now we're going to press it into place up above there, continuing up with the same width that we had on our fold line here. Now we have that part pressed. So now we're getting ready to form our top up here. And this has to be pressed under. And this is where I was talking about in that last sequence. I don't press this yet. I don't pre-press it until I'm at this point right here where I'm going to shape down what I want it to look nice and even in my tower top. So. We'll start with, it's about a quarter inch with what we're turning under there. And so I'm going to press one side once, like this. And now I'm going to turn this side that quarter inch. And what you're looking at is to make sure that you get an even peak and even across. Like now you see I'm not heading in that direction. So I have, since I haven't really given it any memory, I have the opportunity to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go back here. And it looks like it didn't get quite a full quarter inch. So I'm going to start again. Just press it out. I'm going to pull this one. as you go. That looks much better up in there. So now we'll pull this down. 
ingredients to try and break them. Very much there. Maybe wait a couple of seconds and let that set just a little bit and cool down from all of that heat. Let it mold into shape. Remember that, that after you've given something a lot of steam like this, if you let it cool down in its place without moving it, you're letting it set into that shape. And that's a really good um, sewing skill to know about how you can shape something by using the steam and then letting it do it in its place. It's not this tricky. This one's just being quite stubborn for me. First, they want to be one for you guys, right? So, we do set. I did not stay for me. I'm going to stop the video for just a moment while I futz with that so I'm not taking up a lot of time on the video. And then I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, I think I got it tamed into something that I kind of like there. Um, uh, we press this over on our fold line. Well, we have that already a quarter of an inch. We press this to keep this even. And then I started by turning under these edges so that we had even across to it. Now, before I pin this really into place and take it to the machine to stitch, there's a stitching line that happens. I want to really set my little pattern piece right on top of here. Do you see that stitching line right there? I want to mark that, so I'm just going to slide this over and with my chalk, give myself a little line right there. And then I'm going to flip it over and get my line back on here. There. And now I'm going to chalk that across. And this is the line. When we're done, yeah. the stitching that we're getting ready to do, just to refresh your memory, is this one. We're going to come up here and close this side right here. And in one continuous stitch, we're going to go up, pivot, 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 and at that chalk mark, we're going to stitch over. Now we're going to back stitch down here where we started with the machine. But then when we come around over to here, when we get to that point, we're going to stop right there and leave our long threads again. And then we're going to bring those to the back and tie them off and hide them securely so that you don't have ugly back stitching right there. Um, that's how you prevent that. And again, this is that needle with the leg all the way around. And here's the one that we have, but ready to go to the machine. And now that I like what's going on and I make sure that everything is there and I've marked my stitch line, I'm going to give myself a couple of pins to hold them in place just a little bit but I'm, I'm, I'll put a pin up in here, but I'm not 
I'm going to put pins up next to my uh, port pivot points because when I get to the um, machine, that way I can maneuver what's going on here to get my pretty points and I don't have to be jolting or readjusting uh, based on a pin being in the way of stitching. So now I'll meet you back over at the side machine and we'll get that put in there. Okay, so we are at the machine and here's the pocket and again we're closing up this edge and start down there at the bottom, down at C mounts there so we can get our groove on again and come up, pivot, turn, around, there, pivot, pivot, down, pivot, come across, stop right there without back stitching and move a long thread. And we're going to want to watch if we don't catch this while we're stitching right now. So we're going to keep that kind of over there in plain sight so he doesn't snag us up and get caught underneath it. We don't want to stitch through that right now. So, let's get it positioned. And again, this is that needle we play, 16th of an inch. And we want this here pocket, this folded edge, to just cover that seam allowance underneath. So here we go. Let's go down. And it backs it a little bit, secure it a little bit down there. Now we're headed up. Up and down. So we make sure that I'm staying right where I want it to be. So this is loose over there. Now I'm moving up here. I want that kind of beauty because now we are in a place that it needs to be um, back under there so it doesn't get a pleat over here stitching. So now I can just let it do that back over in there. And we're coming up into our area that uh, I don't like to keep a lot of pins in because I want to keep it nice and flat so that I have exactly where I want that point to land. So here we go. Let's get slowly through this. On each of my pivots, and I'll bury the needle. I'm going to go off the edge of our placket that we want to be right next to it. Now I'm going to tuck my little edge right there. That stays tucked down in as I stitch over it. So we don't have any raw edge coming out. There we go. Got it kind of started. Head this way. And just as I'm there, I've got the needle buried. I'm going to pick it up and just for insurance purposes, I'm just taking my pin and making sure that that raw edge is slid down under that. There, yeah, that's my point. I'm going to turn. Down to this point. A little bit, really. Stitch clear around it for our tower pocket. These long threads we're going to pull to the other side, both of them, tie a knot here with by hand, and then thread it through into this space that we've got there. 